It's the great whodunit of Australian natural history. Why did the megafauna, giant animals that roamed Australia thousands of years ago, become extinct? Paleontologists from Flinders University have excavated their bones from deep caves in the mud of dried out lagoons. They've reconstructed their skeletons, discovered what they looked like, and even made moving robots like this giant kangaroo, Procoptodon. But they still don't know what killed them off. Perhaps it happened as Australia's climate warmed, plants died and water holes dried out. Maybe the first Australians who brought fire with them burnt the plants the animals depended on. Or those early Australians may have hunted the giant animals to extinction. But there's no smoking gun. Aboriginal middens can be found all across the country and they're full of the remains of their meals. Shellfish, bones of fish, birds and small mammals, but none of these large ones. Dr Gavin Prideaux has been researching the fate of the megafauna for years and he's uncovered new evidence suggesting the giant kangaroo Procoptodon fell prey to hunters at the sites of the ancient waterholes. We don't think the increased aridity caused the extinction of Procoptodon goliath. It was very clearly an animal that was well adapted to arid conditions. It lived right throughout semi-arid and arid Australia and ate the type of plants that grow still today in the drier parts of Australia. Secondly, we don't think that landscape burning caused the extinction of Procopidon goliath because the types of plants that it relied on heavily were not affected badly by fire. Salt bushes don't burn particularly well. That leaves human hunting as the more likely cause of the extinction of Procopidon goliath. The largest kangaroo that ever evolved was mainly an animal that ate salt bush and blue bushes, hardy shrubs that grow through the drier parts of Australia. And we could determine that from looking at the structure of its skull, its very robust jaws, its big teeth that have a lot of crests for pulverising this type of vegetation. But we also use some other techniques by looking at certain isotopes that were preserved in the tooth enamel. And we also looked at tiny little scratches preserved on the tooth enamel, which also suggested that it ate tough browse vegetation. The oxygen isotopes preserved in the enamel of Procopidon goli indicate that it had to drink more free water than the other animals that were living at the same time, the wombats and the kangaroos that were around at the same time. So it needed to um, counteract the salt essentially that was, it was taking in through its salt bush diet by regularly going to waterholes. And of course one thing we know about humans, our own species, is that we also gravitate to waterholes, particularly in drier areas. But the full story is yet to be told, so Dr Prideaux is heading north. Later in July we're heading up to a site called Alcuta in the Northern Territory. It's about five or six million years old and it contains Australia's earliest megafauna. We're looking to get a much better understanding of the evolution of large animals in Australia and the effects of drought and increased aridity on the Australian landscape and the effects on those megafauna.